In this video here, we're going to show you how to create an orthographic drawing. Orthographic drawings are used to convey information um, and detail about the size of the part you've designed and the features of it. So this could be used for someone who's going to manufacture the part for you, so they know what size to make it there. So, first thing we need to do is we're going to head to File, Open, and we're going to open up our 2x2 two two brick. Click that, we'll click open, and then we're going to go up to file open again. And this time, we're going to open up our drawing border, which you should have copied across. So, we've got our drawing border. This is an A3 sheet of paper. And you can see we've got the title needs to go in. We've got our school, we've got a scale there, we've got the units we'll be working in, and we've got something called third angle projection, which we'll get onto. So the first thing we need to do is place a base view. The base view, under place view at the top, we'll click base. And so that will set the part of the head open. That's how we'll set it first. It's going to scale of 5 to 1. And currently, if we click OK, it's going to come in as a kind of black and white line drawing. So we can just click OK on that there. And we'll see we've got a kind of black and white outline drawing of our brick. Now we want to show what we call the hidden detail, so we can see kind of what's going inside the brick. So we're going to double click in the red box as we hover over it, and we're going to go up to style, I'm going to click hidden line, and we'll see the difference that makes in a second. While we're here we're also going to change the label, and we're going to change that to elevation, and then we are going to click OK there. And you can see now we've got the detail which is inside the brick. So if we had x-ray vision, we could see all the detail there. And that's really useful for explaining exactly what we're looking to have made. So we can click and drag within that red box again. And we can position that over to the bottom left-hand corner there. Now, it would be quite hard to produce this with just one view here. So we're going to add a couple extra views. So we're going to use the project tool. So up under place views, we can project. And as we already had that view selected, it's automatically picked that up. If not, you might have to click on that first view you put in once you click projected. So, I've got this view coming off the top here, and it's going to project it straight up from the top. And I can just click left click to create position that there. And I come back down and go off to the right hand side. And I can left click to position that there. And now, to finish, I need to right click and then move my mouse over to create there. And I've got my two extra views. So as I mentioned, we're using third angle projection. So third angle projection is where the view projected off the top of the block is off the top of the block. And the view projected off the right hand side of the block is off the right hand side of the block. You get something else called first angle projection, and that is the opposite, where the view off the top of the block is actually what the view projected off the top of the block is actually what the view off the bottom off the block, which is a little bit confusing. So we've got our two extra views in there. We want to give them a name so we can click it double click on the red box. So hold over the red box appears double click there. And we're going to select that's going to be called plan under the label there. And we'll click OK. And double click on that red box there. And we're going to call that our end elevation. And we're going to click there, OK there. So now we've got our views in there. We're going to annotate this here. So we'll click on the annotate, annotate tab at the top there. And we want to add some dimensions. So we've got the dimension toolbar there. Uh, sorry, dimension tool there. So we can click on that there. So unlike when we've been using this in our model, nothing's going to change size when we add a dimension. It's purely going to tell us what size it is. So for example, if I click on this line here, it's going to give me the dimension of 9 for that line there. If I click on this circle up here, going to give me a diameter of four millimeters. So that's got a diameter symbol there. So tell me that circular has got a diameter of four millimeters. I could click on that line there and I can click on that circle there and that's going to pick up the center of the circle there first. So it's telling me the center of that circle is four millimeters away from the edge there. Click OK there and again so that's telling me it's four millimeters from the top but it's also quite nice to know that is 4 millimeters from the side, so I click on the edge, click on the circle, 
and I can have that four millimeters from the side as well there. And then just regular measurements, so and um, no, they're not damaged or anything, so we don't have the damage as simple in front of them there. We go down here, we do the height of the stud. So if you like, click that little line, we also click between two lines. So left click there, left click there, and we get the uh, dimension of the stud. Now that's coming in as two mil. Now, if we think back, you might remember that actually the dimension of the stud is 1.7 millimeters. So I click there to position that dimension. I go up to precision and tolerance, and you can see the precision is zero decimal places. So I'm going to change that to one decimal place, and I'm going to click OK. And you can see now we've got a dimension of 1.7 there. And we can zoom in, and we can actually. Oops. <laughs> We can actually click on that 1.7 and we can drag it so we can move it in or out or we can move it off to the side and um, so it's not going over the top of the lines that are coming off there. And that just kind of tidies it up a little bit. So let's think what other dimensions I want to have. I've got the circles in the middle here that I've not dimensioned yet. I've got the height of that interior kind of tube not dimensioned either. So I can go dimension again. I could come to dimension the inside of that there and maybe I'll do it from the bottom or I could do it from that top surface there that's saying it's 8 millimeters. click OK click to position it if you're not sure if it should have 1 or 2 decimal places you can always go in make it sorry 0 or 1 decimal places you can always go in make it 1 decimal place and if it comes up with extra information there so 7.6 rather than 8 mil and then you could leave it like that there so that's 7.6 millimeters I'm going to add dimensions for these two here so we've got four there I'll click OK and I've got five here now I have a funny feeling that's actually more accurate so we're going to change that to one decimal place rather than zero and it's not actually so maybe go back into my four double click on the dimension make it 1.1 and it's 4.2 so I'm going to go back into my 5 there I just double click on it and change that to 0 just to make it a bit neater and there we are so I'm starting to get some information I've not got information like the si overall sizes yet and um, so that's something that you could add so have a think about what other dimensions could be added to this here I want to just press escape at the moment to get rid of my dimension tool I'm going to go to place views and I want to add an isometric view so I'm going to go projected and I'm going to click on that base view again and I'm going to project one over to the top right hand corner so I've clicked my left click to position it right click and then I'm going to click select create there and we need to add change its view label and we want to also change its style so view label I'm going to put isometric in capital letters Click OK there, and I shouldn't have clicked OK. So let's go back into that there. I'm going to change that to shaded, and I'm going to click OK. And you'll see that means it represents the color that you actually um, chose for, and that's quite a nice little representation to have. And I can position that just up to the top right hand corner there. So our leg over is getting there. As I said, you want to add a few more dimensions, but one thing we definitely need to do is edit our title. So to do that there, on the left hand side in your model tree, you might need to click a drop down from sheet one, the little arrow. We're going to right click on my border and we're going to go to edit definition. And this brings us into the definition of the drawing border. We can click on title goes here, or double click, and then we can name that there. So this is my two by two Lego brick. And then I can just click OK, that's gone in. The units are correct. The initial scale is automatically filled in based on the base view we put in there and our school of basic leaf academy there. So we can click finish sketch. Do you want to save? Yes, you want to save that there. So we've got our Lego brick. So what you want to do now is go up to file, save as, and I'm going to save that as my two by two Lego brick. And I can just click save there. And that was automatically saved that 
um, drawing. What you might want to do next is go up to File, and when you go Export, and your export is a PDF, and it's automatically keeping the same file name. That's great. It's saying it's a PDF file, and you can just click Save from that there. That will save it as a PDF, and that means you are able to print it out then um, from whatever PDF software you are using. So that there is how to do an orthographic drawing. Remember, these are used to convey information about the part. I stand a little bit down. Have a go at adding a few more dimensions um, to the one, uh, to this one. But then have a go using uh, creating an orthographic graphic drawing for an hour brick. And see if you can think about what information is important to include onto it.